From getting revenge for your teammate to getting laid out in the Super Bowl, one player even needed life-saving CPR. These are the 25 most brutal hits in NFL history. And for number 25, one hit sends both sidelines into pure pandemonium. Left and again, Grant trying to feel the punt got crushed. This time the ball didn't get to him. Oh, that ain't cool, dog. Kids are watching, but neither is number 24. The time a punter transformed into a human punching bag. It's John Ryan, and I mean the red sheet. Oh, he almost lost the ball. He might be hurt as well. Bro, you're up 21 points in the fourth. What are you doing? But imagine getting hit so hard, you end up in the hospital. Up the middle, middle screen to Adams. Ooh, he got popped in the face. Oh my, mouth guard comes out and they're asking for help right away. Dang, that hit nearly gave Devontae Adams CTE. Which reminds me, Emmanuel Sanders also had a close call. During a showdown between the Rams and Broncos, Hating Manning led Broncos were marching down the field. But just as their offense was finally starting Starting to click, tragedy unfolded before their very eyes. Separation. Oh, big hit. Sanders. Now the cloud came over, and they're going to say he hit a defenseless receiver. Sheesh. Bro, didn't see that coming. Just like Eagle fans didn't see this coming. It's over the middle. Oh, my goodness. Lenore with an unbelievable hit. It's Man, that hit was cold blood. The 49ers Eagle beef has gone too far. But in 2019, the NFL was a completely different world. The 49ers didn't have Brock Purdy, and the Eagles didn't have Jalen Hurts. Instead, we lived in a world where Josh Rosen was a starting quarterback, and his top target wasn't Tyree Kills or Jalen Waddle. It was Alan Hearns. However, everything changed in week three once this happened. The opening touchdown. Come on, I expect more from America's team. That said, the Dallas Cowboys aren't the only ones with a trick up their sleeve. You may think you have people figured out, but Rob Gronkowski is proving the exact opposite could be true. He's not one you might think. Tugs him there, and then he's still holding him, and still pushes him, but no penalty flag. Gronk gets up and jams his shoulder. If Gronk is taking cheap shots, that's how you know the rivalry runs deep. And while the Patriots and Bills can't stand each other, they're not the only ones with bad blood. Finds the open man. He's talking about Kelsey. He gets down at the tube. What did the ball come out? Dang. Derwin James went into straight-up WWE mode. It's a good thing Travis Kelsey was able to shake it off. But it's a lot harder to shake off the pain when three guys are banging you at the same time. Curly gets sandwiched and he loses a helmet. Unnecessary right to defense. Hey, yo, if I ended up in a Bucks sandwich, I'd have a hard time getting up too. Yet, what if I told you that Derrick Henry has as much strength in one hand as those last three players combined? Imagine getting embarrassed on national television. That's enough to mess with a man's psyche. But next up, find out what happens when a human freight train collides with one of the fastest men on the planet. Don't worry, Goodman. Barry Allen couldn't have avoided that hit either. Now, it's already bad enough getting blasted by another man, but it's even worse when you lose the football in the process. Oh, balls up in the air! And it's intercepted off the deflection. First the hit, and the fumble, then the interception. You can't make this stuff up. And also, you can't make up our 13th moment either. In just a few seconds, Robbie Anderson went from picking up the first down to lying on the ground in pain all by himself. Robbie over the middle, and it is Robbie Anderson. And oh, what a hit! Oh my goodness! Eric Harris blasting the ball out of the hands of Robbie Anderson, who stays down. Ouch! I thought leaving the Jets was supposed to help players. While Robbie Anderson lives to see another day, not all players are as lucky. Because in 2022, all eyes were on Monday Night Football, watching the Bills and Titans. But not because it was a thrilling football game. See, there are moments bigger than football, especially when an ambulance comes rushing onto the field. Steps and fires, and it's caught. It's Burks, and there's an injured player down for Buffalo. Dane was a little bit of a victim of friendly fire right there from 
from Edmonds who came in at the end. You see his head just get driven backwards. It's a very emotional scene down here as all the Bills players were gathered around as they were putting Dane Jackson on the ambulances. Thankfully, Dane Jackson is back to where he belongs, the gridiron. But if anyone can understand what it's like to have the game taken away from you, it's Chris Godwin. This dude had it all. He was one of the game's best receivers, receiving passes from the greatest quarterback of all time, Tom Brady. However, none of that mattered to the Saints. Tearing your ACL sucks, but at least the Super Bowl ring is a good constellation prize. This takes us to the top 10, where the hits get harder and the pain grows deeper. Because coming up, it's the 2023 moment that had the entire world sending prayers. But first, we gotta talk about two of the league's biggest divas, OBJ and Josh Norman. And in 2015, both players were playing the best football of their career. OBJ was a year removed from his infamous gravity-defying one-hand catch against the Dallas Cowboys, whereas Norman and spectacular coverage skills had turned the Panthers into a Super Bowl contender. So what happens when you pit one of the league's top receivers against one of the league's top cornerbacks? I answer thinking about what could have been, and here's what was going on after that run a moment ago. This man, Josh Norman, tried to show OBJ who was boss, but OBJ wasn't able to swallow his pride and let Norman have his way. Now, watching the back and forth between Josh Norman and Odell Beckham after the play, and when Josh Norman came over to the sideline... Seven... For an entire game, these two players are at each other's throats. OBJ alone was responsible for four penalties, three of which were personal fouls. It's a miracle neither player was ejected from the game, especially after this massive collision. Rose straight up tried to end this man's career, so it shouldn't come as a surprise that Norman wasn't a fan. Uh, what he did, obviously, is on display. Um, you can see what kind of player he is. And you pull back the layers of skin and you really see what it is. Um, film don't lie. It's safe to say, these dudes are never becoming friends. And neither are Wes Welker and Ryan Clark. Because in the late 2000s, the Steelers and Patriots were the worst of enemies. That's when Ryan Clark made a hit that sent every Patriots fan into a frenzy. My man was taking no prisoners. But for as painful as that hit appeared, it's nothing compared to what Reggie Bush experienced. Lines up as the tailback. Reeves swings it out. The ball is knocked away. And a crunching hit put on by Sheldon Brown. And Bush uh, takes a while to get up. And now goes down again. Man. I wouldn't even wish that on my worst enemy. Which is ironic because in Super Bowl 52, the Eagles hated the Patriots with a passion. For 60 minutes straight, they were each other's worst enemies. But in the second quarter, things were able to get way more personal. Deep that field, wide open, Brandon Cooks. And he gets smacked down at the 40 yard line, taking some shot there by Jenkins. With emotions riding at an all-time high, Malcolm Jenkins just delivered the biggest hit of his career. It's a shame Brandon Cooks wasn't able to finish the most important game of his career. But when you're playing against Patrick Willis, finishing the game becomes a luxury. Oh, what a hit. Look out. Brad Smith. My goodness. I'm not sure about this one. That was Patrick Willis who hit him high. Michael Lewis had him down low. Either Rat Smith is a contortionist, or this dude ain't okay. Now, we've seen what Patrick Willis can do, but imagine that hit times 10. Because in the 2006 Pro Bowl, when everyone was going at half speed, Sean Taylor was a man on a mission. That's when the unthinkable happened. The run, and he's gonna come up short. Oh! Oh, Sean Taylor! I don't know if it was a fake. It might be he just decided to run with it, but Sean Taylor came from about 30 yards back. The hit was cold, but the celebration was below freezing. Although it's got nothing on what we saw this season from DeMonte Kazee. Because against the Colts, Kazee delivered a hit so ruthless and so powerful that the NFL suspended him for the rest of the season. <laughs> Now 
Now, I expected a lot of sympathy towards Mike Pittman, but the one thing that I definitely wasn't expecting was the GOAT to get involved. Nobody likes seeing players get hurt, but hard hits happen. QBs should not be throwing the ball in areas where they are exposing their teammates to these types of hits. Coaches need to coach better. Cues need to read coverages and throw the ball to the right places and defenders should aim for the right hitting areas. To put the blame on the defense player all the time is just flat out wrong. Need better QB play. Hold up, does Tom Brady have a point? I mean, Gardner Minshew put Michael Pittman in a dangerous position. And it wasn't just Brady who had Kazee's back. Because when Mike Tomlin chimes in on the situation, everyone listens. You know, usually I talk about more in the target. Um, the target was low and both guys were going. It was just unfortunate. I know he, he is not a dirty player. He doesn't aspire to, to do some of the things. Um, sometimes it's just, you know, professional football today and, and how difficult uh, it is to operate. In the end, the NFL upheld their suspension, but that doesn't mean the situation is cut and dry. So let us know in the comments, did Kazee cross the line? Or is this an example of wrong place at the wrong time? However, our third moment isn't subjective, it's straight up evil. Cracko rolling, rolling, and running, and he's gonna have to, oh, not the ball comes out, helmet's off, watch this, Joe with a good run, slides, oh. You hate to see any quarterback, let alone Joe Falco, absorb such a punishing blow. But that doesn't mean that Kiko Alonso is feeling any less guilty about the situation. You know, like I said, it's a bang bang play, you know, I hope he's all right. I thought maybe if he slid a second sooner, I was anticipating him sliding, I was going to not hit him. But I think he, it was like, you know, uh, second late, which is why I hit him. Kiko Alonso may have not felt shame about the situation, but that doesn't mean he was in the clear yet. Because once Stephen A. Smith and Max Kellerman voiced their opinions, they got everyone talking. I think he should be fine. I think he should be fine because you have to send a message that the quarterbacks are going to be protected at all costs. But I didn't think that the hit was as egregious as Ravens players tried to make it out to be. Was it a little late? Probably so. Uh, but I thought that uh, when, when Flacco slid, I thought he slid a little bit too late. So uh, it's not a foul if he if it's unintentional because he, they do it simultaneously, right? Like Flacco slid late and Kiko Lanza had already launched. That said, there's one thing that Stephen A. Smith forgot to mention, the score. That's right, Kiki Alonso's team didn't win, far from it. The Ravens wound up winning 40-0, which is why, as crazy as this hit was, the NFL only fined Alonso a mere $9,000. But for number two, Vontez Burfecht picked a war with Antonio Brown. It all started in the 2016 playoffs when Burfecht leveled out AB in the most vicious way possible. Gonna be flagged for this on the hit on Antonio Brown, and it's gonna put. It's highly possible that this hit alone gave AB CTE. Not to mention, it also ended the Bengals' season. You'd think that'd be enough to stop Perfect from any future drama. You'd be thinking incorrectly. first hit is already enough to raise some red flags. Although Burfecht decided to take things a step further the second time, he made the mistake of telling Juju Smith-Schuster his next. The peel back block, and that's that's ridiculous. You know, you, you, you spend a lot of time on education on all what's legal and what isn't. Mess with TikTok boy, and you're going to pay the price. But for as much as Vontez Burfecht hates the Steelers, he'll even admit he loves the game more. So for the game to be taken away from someone, no one wants to see that happen. Although on January 2nd, 2023, chances of Damar Hamlin ever playing again were next to impossible. The hit was painful, but few people realized what was really happening. Upon impact, Hamlin had suffered something called commodio cortis. See, commodio cortis is a very rare condition that occurs when the heart's rhythm is interrupted by a blow to the chest during a specific 40 millisecond time frame. Yes, you heard that right. A specific 40 millisecond time frame. The odds of that happening are next to none. But now, the Bills medical staff were forced to respond to the impossible. Welcome back to Cincinnati, where a medical person have been working on Bill's safety, Damar Hamlin, for the last 
nine minutes. If not treated within three minutes, Hamlin's condition was 97% fatal. Thankfully, the medical staff stepped up to the plate. They were able to administer CPR and AED, and the 25-year-old would survive the night. But at the time, neither team knew this to be the case. So as our team made it on the field, and you could see the reaction uh, of the players that were out there and how they were impacted, mostly their guys, a couple of our guys, you could, you could quickly see the seriousness of the nature that it was different than anything we'd experienced. And during those moments, uh, all everyone's hoping for is the best case scenario with DeMar. No one's processing whether this game is going to be played or delayed. That, that's not going through anyone's mind. Zach Taylor knew this wasn't your typical situation, causing the Bills and Bengals to do something unexpected. They stopped playing. The game was canceled. Stephon Diggs will tell you that it was a situation he'll never forget. I remember vividly, it kind of ha happened right, right in front of my face because typically sometimes I get off the bench to support the defense. So I'm looking and the way it kind of happened so fast, he fell and the guys that were behind me, like I thought somebody pushed him and he just like, you know, like you flop or you go on the ground. But then he didn't move. So when you were up close and personal, it is something that we, I don't wish on anybody. After all of this, the craziest part of it all is that Damar Hamlin is still going strong. How are you feeling before the game and when you were out there? Normal? Super normal, feeling great. Denny Kellington, he came out and administered CPR to you, alerted everyone else that the situation was pretty serious. I owe Denny my life, literally. You know, he loves to say he was just doing his job. That's something I'm, I'm, I'm truly thankful for and I don't take for granted. None of which would have been possible if it weren't for the Bills training staff. Please welcome this year's recipient of the Pat Tillman Award for Service, the training staff of the Buffalo Bills. If there is one thing we hope you take away from this tonight, Learn CPR and how to use an AED because they save lives. Set a goal for yourself. Do it this summer before football season. You don't have to be perfect. We always say doing something is better than doing nothing. This goes to show you never know when you'll have the opportunity to change a life. It may be physical, but that doesn't have to be the case. However, when that opportunity does come calling, be ready. You may just end up a hero. Just like you also have an opportunity right now. That's right, all you gotta do is click the video on the screen. But alright, there's a 97% chance that this video will disappear in the next three seconds.